All right, guys, we're going to look at the top 16 decks from the Knoxville regionals. In that day, there was three regionals that happened, one in Singapore, one uh, in Melbourne, Australia, and one in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're going to look at the Knoxville top 16, one of the biggest tournaments regionals that happened that day, and we'll look at the, the results, guys. So let's jump right in. Here is number 16, Chien Pao, Backscalibur. Uh, absolutely impressive deck here by Jared. Uh, three Chien Pao, the Frigid's at three he is running the Bibarel because Bibarel helps you so much with Iono late game and throughout the game you're actually drawing uh, tossing out all your hand like you're literally with the spirit energy retrievals with ultra balls you're you're throwing out so much of your hand out and even when you attack that it makes sense that you want a Bibarel and get your hand filled up again next turn and it also protects you from any Iono so we did see that game, I think it was Connor who was playing the Qian Pao and what happened was Ian Rob uh, got him with a Roxanne Path late game after he took out his Bibarel so the only way he could counter that was set up two Bibarels <laughs> so it's very strong, very important Bibarel for the deck uh, without it he really can get shut down, controlled really really heavy and we see one Iron Hands in this uh, deck as well eight water energy and one lightning for that iron hands was the perfect ratio for him so i guess a lot of these champions they run nine to eight energies uh two ionos only he is running a bunch of cross switchers that's that's uh, impressive that these decks actually use that makes sense because you could put two champions in the uh, one in the front one in the back and you could cross switch between them and then you get whatever you need from that that makes sense also, uh, Irida can find you items, so you could find the second piece of cross switcher. Makes total sense to me why you would run four in an Irida deck. Uh, also, Arvin is going to help you with that as well. We need more V Star for Seal Stones, honestly. We need more stuff like that. Um, three Nest Balls, three Rare Candy. Yeah, I, th I think three Rare Candy is the right uh, number. You don't want any more because you're only using them for your Max Caliber engine. Two Super Raw, two Earthen Vessels, only two, wow. One Hisuian Heavy Ball, in case the Chian Pao gets stuck in the prizes, and four Pokestop. Pokestop is huge for this deck. What is he looking for here? Uh, Ultra Balls, Rare Candy, Super Rods, Earthen Vessels, Spirit Injury Retrievals. There's so much he could be looking for, so it makes sense. Okay, that was number 16, guys. Jared Chian Pao. Let's go to Maradon Flag. There was a Maradon Top 16, that's crazy. I mean, it is a very consistent deck, but you can really read it easily. But uh, I guess if you get set up really strong, the deck is very hard to counter. Also, he had the Iron Hands in there for one prizers. So can have a really good matchup against Lost uh, Zone. Very impressive, guys. We didn't expect a lot of Meridons in this Knoxville tournament. But as you can see, Meridon is still winning. This one has a Drapion V for all the Mew matchups as well. Yeah, lots of Pokemon, honestly. 13 energies, one double turbo for the arms. Or oh, sorry, iron, <laughs> iron hands. He's running one Raihan, two of the Arvins. Only one Nest Ball makes sense. It's a very consistent deck with the tandem unit. I bet you he get, it runs a lot of uh, removal for stadiums. Lost Vacuum at one, Bravery Charm for what? Bravery Charm for the Iron Hands? Make it 280. That's pretty hard to get rid of. For a seal stone at one. Oh my god, only three uh, path to the peak removal, which is actually very risky, in my opinion. Especially in a Maradon deck. But it makes sense, once he's set up, he really doesn't care about calling out any, any abilities. Once he has the Marip uh, in the back end, and he already, for example, used the Squawkabilly. And he's got, uh, he used his tandem unit and he's set up his board. Makes sense he doesn't need any more uh, V or EX abilities to set him up. He just needs a way to get more generation of electricity. And he can do that. He can find more items. He can use Marip. There's many ways he can get there. So this makes total sense that he doesn't even care about Path to the Bay. He's actually running one himself. Very impressive, but you have to be set up like early game. <laughs> he can't because he, he cannot get rid of that path to the pick and then he gets pretty much shut down. That forest seal stone could help him get away from that. Could help him get his last vacuum too. Because he really wants 
one turn without with a Meridon on board and he basically fills up his whole board uh, because he can bring out two Meridons and then th they both use their abilities and pick up. So basically you get four Pokemon easily. So it makes sense. He just needs one turn with no path and then after that he really doesn't care because the Flaffy is not an EX or you can't shut down this ability. Makes total sense and then you rely on the electrical generator. Really interesting deck guys. Let's move on number 14, Gardevoir here. Gardevoir is doing so good. It's got some bad matchups. But it's such a strong deck. It does push a lot of power on itself. So it does have a bad matchup against Lost Zone. It does hurt itself a lot. But against really, really strong decks. <coughs> you have so much dam damage output. That this just totally destroys. Like it's, it's a really good matchup against Charizard. Good matchup against these big, big monsters. That really need a lot of damage. I think it's more consistent than Chiampao as well. Well, Chiampao just needs one Evo. Gardevoir. Well, Gardevoir just gets so much more draw power. That just is more consistent. So, I think it does push more power than Chiampao. Now, Chiampao is got its own consistency. Its own, like... Basically, uh, you need, you're need you heavy reliant on items. Whereas, Gardevoir, you're heavy reliant on just tossing out your basic energy. So, it's a little bit... Better, I think, in my opinion. I think the Gardevoir deck is better. I think if it didn't have a bad match against Lost Zone, because it just puts so much damage on itself and it makes itself susceptible to Lost Mines, I think this deck would be insane. Also, Charizard just... Uh, even though it ha has a good match against Charizard, I mean, this is... It counters it. Charizard's the... It's got weakness against Charizard. So it still struggles. You got to be like a really big brain to play this deck. So it's really impressive that this deck made it this far. But we did see it win a lot of tournaments. So this deck has strength, a lot of strength. And there's uh, a lot of people that believe in this deck. It just needs big brains, absolutely huge brains to manipulate the deck to its perfection and use it correctly. 10 Psychic and 2 Reversals. Yeah, we've seen this a lot, 2 Reversals. Uh, 1 Artisone is all he needed. Uh, Path really shuts down this deck. So... Also, this is very surprising. Only three stadiums, no more. Three stadium removals. Usually you go for five. Uh, four to five is what I'm seeing in most decks. Two counter catchers. A lot of counter catchers there. How many bosses are you running? One boss. Does he run any pal pads? No pal pads. So that boss is huge. And I guess he's always running from behind because he's one shotting one prizer. So that's what the two counter catcher is for. Really impressive, guys. Let's move on to another Gardevoir here. See the difference? This one only has one worker. That one had two. Same ratio of uh, Pokemon, but this one actually runs Manaphy. No, this one actually runs Manaphy as well. So there is no difference. The only difference is this one is not running any Screamtail. So we opted for the Zacian Fee Cressela. Two counter catchers here as well. How many bosses? One boss. One professors, um, and then lost vacuum nest ball pal pad. There is the pal pad for the boss, and potentially for more Ionos if he wants to. There is a professor's two row as well to pick up his guard war gun. Interesting. That's what I'm talking uh, to you guys about the big brain plays where you need to keep your guard war ex safe. Really, really impressive, guys. Thirteenth place here. Uh, Charizard, Charizard actually made it, Isaiah Chevel made Charizard happen. Let's look at this deck, three Charizard EXs, what, what's his Charmander ratio? So he's running one of the Ember Charmanders, and then only one of the Blazing Stadium Char uh, Charmanders, but his uh, Heat Tackle Charmander is the biggest. Makes sense that Heat Tackle is huge. Um, he is running a Radiant Charizard as well, six Fire Energy, extremely risky. Let's see, does he run two Super Rods? Two Super Rods. Two, two TM Devos, wow. That's probably how he did it. He just kept TM Devoing every other person he sees. <coughs> two Lost Vacuums, a Seal Stone, two Artisans, wow. No Lost Cities, just went for the Artisan, wow. For more consistent plays. And then, yeah. Three box orders and three Iono. Three Iono, a little bit too much. But doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. He could be using this really early, could be using it late. 
I don't like using Iono early. Always sets me up for failure, but it's it's RNG, so it makes sense. Let's move on, guys. We got one more Charizard here. This is a Lost Box Charizard. It's not a real Charizard, Radiant Charizard, more of a one prizer Charizard Lost Box. Uh, it did actually make it. This is I heard that has a, a lot of bad matchups against Lost Zone decks like this that are strictly one prizers that can just dish out a lot of damage. Can also control the decks. With the Spirit Tome, has a lot of control. Let's see how many uh, Path to the Peak is he running. No Path to the Peak. Spirit Tome is his only control here. Three Psychic, two Fire, and one Double Energy. <laughs> wow. Such a low resource deck. Running all the Colorus. Well, the Roxanne is there for Disruption. Two of the Poke Gear for more uh, consistency. A Palbad. One Mirage Gates, all she needs. Wow, wow. <laughs> that's it? That's very impressive, guys. Well, most of his cards are only need one energy. Makes sense. And this one doesn't even need any energy. Wow. Very impressive, guys. If you want to learn how to play Lost Zone, go ahead, check out Michael, man. He, check out that, uh, I think it was top... Yeah, the top 16, he was, he was, I think, in the top 16. I can't remember. There were so many games that we watched. Okay, there was a Roaring Moon, guys, number 11, so let's jump right in, or oh, sorry, 10, Roaring Moon, let's look at this, a Morpico, Squawk Billy, and two Galarian, very consistent, nine energies, no Iron Hands in this deck, two Professor Sada, that's it, that's a little bit risky, one Judge, one Iono, instead of the two Iono, three energy switch, so we're not maxing out on those either. Two, four seal stones, so we can find any card we need anytime we want to. Three book stop, one town store. Wow, really big brain decisions here, guys. Really impressed with this deck. Check this out. This looks like a very good, insp inspiring deck for a Roaring Moon list. If you want to build your own Roaring Moon, check out this list. This is very, very good. Uh, it has a lot of good options. Town store into book stop. Also running the emergency. So you, you basically run a bunch of tools. Because you can find them easily. And then with the Arvins as well. Oh no, we don't actually run any Arvins in this deck. That's a very impressive. Yeah, we don't actually run Arvins. We run Re Research and Sada mostly. Then we run some Gust. We could run Iono if you want to. It makes sense. Alright guys, ninth place here. Lost Zone. 4 Comfey, 1 Sableye. This is another Lost Zone. But this one is actually a Kyogre Lost Zone. The Dragonite there. Is, is Dragonite just really good against, like, uh, the freaking, is it just really good against, like, V-Star or Giratina? Or are, are we just using it for that insane ability that's consistent and just stays on board? I guess that's what we're doing with it. We're just keeping it for that insane consistency. Look at that, there's a Mawile in this deck. There's so much control here. Echoing Horn at one. And there's, wow, what an insane deck this is, guys. Look this up, guys. This this deck needs a freaking uh, genius to, to run it. And Azul ran this, got ninth place in this tournament. Man, Azul just keeps doing amazing work here. We got a Giratina Lost Box here, guys. Let's look at this. Four Comfy, three Giratina. One Sibylai, one Cram is all he wants. And one Radiant Greninja. This one's also running Spirit Tome. Just in case you get rid of his path, he can run that Spirit Tome on the back. Also, Spirit Tome early is better than path, in my opinion. Because they can get rid of your path, but you can, they cannot get rid of your Spirit Tome. That's impressive, guys. Four Mirage Gates. Two Switch Cards. Two Switch. Consistent. Like every other V-Star deck. Gertina V-Star. And they're basically running the same The same deck <laughs> did really well. 26th and 8th place. Really, really strong decks guys there it is roaring moon here is in seventh place let's see any differences here anything special still running the town store wow <laughs> look how many players ninth place and seventh place and 15th place all ran the same deck they all ran the same uh, uh they all ran the same roaring moon but ross Cowthorn. Which is, it's Roscoe Thorn's Roaring Moon. That's, <laughs> he's the one that plays the highest, the seventh place. 
pretty fitting and uh, let's move on there's an anti iron rebellion that made it huge deck uh, very hard to play against guys three iron valiants the meta champ right there for the looping one bebero and a squawk ability then he starts rotating himself with all the switch card four four an escape rope as well oh my god so much rotation there Earthen Vessel at 1, Heavy Ball to find more Iron Valiance, the Super Rods, and then we have some Future Booster Energy Capsules for more switching around. Future Pokemon are going to be dishing out so much damage, it's going to be insane. We also have TM Devos there, Magma Basin. Wow, this is such an interesting deck, guys. If you want to learn how to play an Iron Valiant, Tyler here will show you the way, and you can also check out his uh, gameplay in the stream. It's very impressive. Got a Gardevoir here, guys. Another Gardevoir. This one is running the same uh, run, Reversal Energies. It's the same one as the 5th place regional in Knoxville. <laughs> so this is the 5th place regional in Knoxville. This is uh, Raymond's uh, deck. As you can see, guys, a lot of the people who play the same decks. It makes sense to be, get inspired and just play strong decks that are actually doing really well. You just perform at the highest abilities. Another Roaring Moon here. This one is played a, a little bit different. This is a different list than with Ross's. This is Jose's. He's not running any town stores. I think that's the only difference. No town stores. That's it. Roaring Moon is a really tough deck to play against, guys. It just has so many answers against you. Can boss really early and still dish out insane amounts of damage with the stadiums. And can consistently get themselves to three energy pretty simply. One attachment, one Sada, and one Dark Patch. Or with a Galarian Moltres, one energy switch really. And that's pretty much it. So he can get turn two KOs very, very consistently. Making this deck a little bit difficult to play against. Because if he picks up like a Charmander that you had and he bosses it because he didn't need to Sada this turn... And he KOs your Charmander and you can't set up again. Or you KOs your Giratina V. That's pretty much game. You can't set up. You just fall so far behind. Because you can KO every turn. And you can't. And there's a Giratina V here, guys. Lost Box. Two Water Energy. Wow, very... So we're not going to focus on Radiant Greninja. Is basically what this guy is uh, focused on. He, Ian, Ian just doesn't want green, Gradient Greninja. I can't believe how far Ian did in this tournament. Because I did watch a couple of his games and he he did lose the games that I was watching. Still made it third place. Absolutely insane. Just showing you how <laughs> strong this guy is. I mean, he was struggling in some games, but he still picked them back up. Against the Qian Pao, he was struggling. Bad matchup against him. And he still tried really hard and did the, some insane strategies. Came back one game, just couldn't do it. So it's amazing to see Ian Rob still performing. High, high level guys. Very young guy. Two super rods. This is a Giratina lost box, man. This is this is how Giratina is supposed to be played. Uh, man, I, I'm gonna use this deck in my in my PTCGL. He is using one Avery. I'm not sure about that. Makes sense though. Against like Roaring Moon, can slow it down a lot. Wow, well, against more Roaring Moon, this actually can help a lot. Against Lost Zone, can help a lot. Yeah, Avery makes sense. All right, guys, moving on. We got second place here, Lost Zone Box. Aiden Kos. Absolutely impressive play here against the finalist. He, he performed really well with that Dragonite. I think he just missed one turn where he couldn't switch to deal enough energy and the opponent was able to just stack his hand really well and, and, and get the damage he needed out. And that's what lost him the game. He could have easily, Aiden could have easily won this regionals. He just, one turn, he missed the switch. He couldn't get it. And he couldn't get any damage output out. And then the opponent came out from behind. So, very impressive deck here, guys. One Cram, one Radiant Greninja, one Kyogre. A Dragonite, the Mawile, a Manaphy. Really interesting control, guys. This is a whole Lost Zone control deck that uh, we need to talk about. We need to actually make a video and learn how to play this deck because this is a lot of control. Mawile can sit there keeping you on board until he's fully set up and he's got all his Dragonites and he's got his last zone at 7 or whatever it is that he needs it to be so he can start using his Mirage Gate. 
and it's really effective in this uh, meta I think in my opinion because if you start let's say for example with a Mew against a Charizard and he's put a Mew down he cannot retreat the Mew a lot of Charizards don't run switches and so basically you get a couple of turns of complete calm and relaxation you can set up and also when you come back to attack you're just hitting so much damage that when the Charizard shows up Let's say, let's say he had the charm in the arm board, you, the attempting trap, he went for a Charizard. Now your Dragonite can KO that Charizard, easy, PZ, plus the 90 damage. You actually get plus 10 over. So you're hitting him for 340, which is impressive. It KOs anything and makes total sense, guys. The mobile is just insane in this deck. I'm actually kind of worried that maybe you need more because I, I when i watched these lost zone box decks they really relied on mawile and he stayed on the board for a while but once he's done i mean once once you're stack once you stack up your lost zone he you pretty don't pretty much don't need him anymore makes sense here he's only at one and then finally gardevoir did actually win this tournament he did actually beat the aiden so gardevoir did it really well it's the exact same list i think well, besides a couple of changes here, let's look at it. Two counter catchers, one of the bosses, four of the Ionos, a lot of disruption there, guys. Two Fog Crystals, two Super Rods, and he did run a Scream Tail, guys. He did run a Scream Tail. I'm, I'm impressed with these decks. I'm very impressed. I'm also getting inspired like that Mawile makes sense in these uh, Lost Zone decks. A lot of the times, like... We don't have enough damage output. We need like 50 more damage or 40 more damage to really KO some big guys. And especially now with the big EX is coming in. Mawile can really help you. You can go for a Mawile. Let's say he KOs a Mawile. Uh, but he, he uses a lot of resources, right? He, he needs to use a switch to come in. He KOs the Mawile. Well, I think if he switches, then Mawile cannot do anything, right? During your opponent's next turn, the defending Pokemon can't retain. During your next turn, the defending Pokemon takes 19 more damage. The reason they... When they write the defending Pokemon, that means it doesn't matter what the Pokemon is. There's 90 damage happening no matter what. They didn't say this Pokemon. They said the defending Pokemon. That means there's 90 damage happening no matter what. And so that makes total sense, guys. This actually... Mawa. So what you do is you set up to... So you play Colrus... You play the Confes and then you retreat into the Mawile, try to attack, you get him locked in. Then uh, let's say he gets loose and he attacks into you with the Charizard, uses a lot of resources. Now you can KO that Charizard with uh, with anything, with a Giratina V. Uh, Cramoran is not going to do insane amounts of damage. That 200 damage with the Cram, I mean that's insane. You can do so much with this Mawile. So I'm going to look into this. But yeah, guys, I'm getting inspired. I hope you guys are getting inspired as well. Make sure you guys look at these deck lists. Check it out. I'll leave a link down below for where you can find them. And yeah.